All right, guys, today we're going to talk about the best Spider Co. you can buy in 2023. Now, in my opinion, this one might be a little bit controversial of a pick, but it is going to be the Spider Co. Smock. Now, I've talked about this knife in other previous videos, but I still think it is worth talking about in this video because it is a really, really good knife. And I think, I forget where I exactly heard this statement, but I think it's probably the truest descriptor to the Spyderco smock that exists. And that is that this is ultimately like Spyderco's rendition or idea or their answer to the 940 Osborne by... Um, bench made and honestly to be like completely fair and honest i think that that is a really good thing because the 940 osborne by bench made is a really great blade and it is probably one of what i would think most people consider like one of the best edc knives out there and most of that reasoning is due to two sole factors and that is the action and how smooth the 940 is and secondly how thin and pocket friendly the 940 is now the 940 it's been a while since i've hand, handled one and uh, i would say that the 940 is probably still a s bit more slender than the smock but to be honest um for me, I've actually had 940s in the past and sold them because I really disliked how slender and thin they were. They almost felt like they weren't hand filling enough. So when I got the smock or when I originally bought it, I was a little bit concerned because I was like, is this actually going to be a little bit too slender for me? But I got it in hand and it is actually really well proportioned. Whether you choose to choke up on the blade like this or whether you choose to choke back on it um, or just hold it in a natural grip, it has plenty of grip length to it. It does not feel too thin in hand. But the thing that I like the most about it and what makes it so pocket friendly, even though it is a little bit thicker than something like a 940, is because it is so thin like it's uh or not even so much thin but it's super low profile like you guys can see on the back of the blade there is really nothing that protrudes even though this is a flipper it is a bit of a front flipper like the way that the flipper tab is it's technically you know placed towards the front and designed for you to flip like such so because of that it has a very streamlined rear profile there's nothing sticking out of the back and what that means is if you're carrying your knife in the same pocket as your phone your wallet or your keys or something like that you're not going to have this weird protrusion in the back hanging up scratching or damaging things in your pocket it's going to be very low profile and E easy to carry and I think like that's the biggest reason why or the biggest thing biggest determining factor of why people are drawn to carry a particular knife now in addition to that once again the other winning factor for the 940 is its action and that is something that this knife also wins at now this knife it kind of seems it's a little bit weird it's a little bit of an enigma because the because the 940 at the core uh, or sorry because the smock at the core seems like it's a button lock knife, but it's actually technically just a um, compression lock with a little bit of a trick, if you will. So technically, like I said, this is a reversed uh, compression lock. That's how it works, similar to a paramilitary two, para three, um, even the new militaries. But uh, the thing is, this comes from the opposite handle scale as most normal compression locks. And because of that, it uses a button on this side to actuate or rather disengage that lock once it is in a locked position. So it makes for a knife that is very quick and easy to um, put away. And it makes for an action that is very good. In addition to that too, I think one thing that isn't honestly like I don't want to say hyped up, but isn't discussed at all about this knife is that its action is very smooth because it uses um, phosphorus bronze washers with ceramic ball bearings. So this is on bearings for those anti-bearing guys out there. This is unfortunate, but it is, in my opinion, very well done because it is still phosphorus bronze washers with ceramic caged ball bearings so it, it is really good and once again that is why it is stupidly smooth like you guys can see as i've been playing with it throughout the video you know you can close this thing effortlessly like you just give it a little bit of a flick and it closes right now the cool thing is because this does have a spidey hole you can spidey flick it you can also use the flipper to it and if you because this isn't like quite a true button lock you can 
deploy it by pressing in the button lock like you would with other traditional button lock knives. However, you do have to give it a bit of a wrist flick, like you have to give it a little bit of a snap to break the detent because that's the thing with traditional um, button lock knives. They don't really have a detent to them, at least not in the same way as this, because this still is ultimately a compression lock, so that means it's a fairly close relative to the liner lock, so it still has that traditional detent ball to it that is sitting on the leaf spring, so to speak, of that locking mechanism. So if you do want to deploy it that way, it does work. You just have to press in on that uh, button lock and really swing the blade out. But you can make it work. So you get three pretty easy um, deployment methods. I will say my least favorite part about this knife is the fact that that hole, that spidey hole, is kind of tucked up in a way. So it is not the easiest to spidey flick, but you can get more than enough of your middle finger in there to spidey flick it. So it's not perfect. It's not like spidey flicking a Mannix or a Paramilitary 2 that have oversized spidey holes designed for ease of opening but it there is more than enough there and once again because this knife is running on bearings you literally just have to like get it a little ways you got to get it going but it will fly into action so anyways this is one of in my opinion the best spider codes that you can buy it is a little bit more expensive and if you're like me and you make custom modifications it becomes even more expensive but Honestly, for about $180 to $200, you can get into a smock, and uh, S30V blade steel isn't magna cut. It's not the newest or coolest steel, but like a lot of people don't realize, S30V is completely fine, and in my opinion, it just it, it's a good EDC knife steel. And there are more expensive knives out there that still use S30V. It's a proven steel, and it does work very well. So anyways, that is the Spyderco smock and why I think it is one of the best, if not the best Spyderco you can buy in 2023.